the Blank Company, makers of that extra special Blankerine, food of Superman, presents. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the adventures of Superman, wonder of wonders, man of marvels, visitor to the Earth from the planet Krypton, which exploded into a million stars and wiped out the race of which Superman is the last remaining example. Superman stands for fairness and strength and endurance, too. So if you would be a junior Superman, a member of the constantly growing Supermen of America, remember the rules of our organization. First... Help the weak and helpless. Second, train heart and hand and mind to patriotic service. Third, build up your own strength and endurance and vitality by insisting on those regular every morning platefuls of blankerine. And now, Superman. Boys and girls, your attention, please. This week we bring you a new story of how Superman brought help to the United States Navy and met for the first time a ruthless foreign agent known as the Shark. It begins in the office of the managing editor of the New York Daily Flash, where Paris White, drawn and pale, sits at his desk in conference with reporter Clark Kent. You know Kent's secret, and so do I. But as he sits there respectfully listening to his chief, no hint escapes that the young, mild-mannered lake man for the Daily Flash is in reality... The strange visitor from another world. Spectacles hide the queer lights in his eyes. An ordinary blue serge suit conceals the smooth ripple and flow of muscular strength beyond anything man has ever known. The power of Superman is subdued as Kent listens to his chief unfold a startling tale. Shut the door, Kent. Now then, get this quickly and get it straight. It's unusual and it may be dangerous. Not married, are you? Married? Oh, no, Chief. I didn't think so, but it's well to be sure. If you go down there to Newport News, I hope you come back. What? That is, I want you to come back on your feet, not in the box. Chief, what makes you think I... You know Grayson, don't you? Hard Grayson? Probably one of our best men. Maybe the very best. Well, Grayson left the Newport News five days ago with orders to report by telephone every day at 8 o'clock. On Wednesday, that's the day before yesterday... He called and said he'd have something sensational any minute. You mean a sensational story? I don't ask questions, just listen. Then there was a funny noise at the other end, and that's the last we've heard from Grayson. Oh, my goodness, Chief. So now you're going to Newport News to see what's happening and also to find Grayson. Yes, sir. Can you tell me what's going on? I mean, what's supposed to be going on? Well, listen. And remember, this is in the strictest confidence. I know because... Well, never mind. Just believe me when I say that I do know. You've heard of the Y-boats? Only vaguely. Kent, the Y-boats are America's newest submarines. That is, they will be when they're built. One of them is built and almost ready to be launched. Oh, where? Newport News. When? That's what I don't know and can't find out. And now get this. The shark has decided that the first Y-boat shall not be launched at all. The shark? You remember the Benson affair? That was the shark, Kent. So was the business of the Army's air- anti-aircraft gun. The shark is a freelance apparently with a tremendous organization, operating solely for his own good, profit. I understand, sir. What's good for the shark is bad for us. Bad for all of us, Kent. For you and me and America. That fly boat down there in Newport News is America's greatest contribution to naval development. I understand. Maybe you see now why the shark is so interested. Obviously, Kent, he's being paid and paid well. By whom? I don't know. And the FBI doesn't either. We hope to find out. Meanwhile, we'd also like to find out what happened to Commander Richards. Who's he? Another reporter? Well, now, here's all I know. All anybody knows. Commander Richards is the designer of the Y-boats. The one man that knows his secrets from stem to stern. The man who has had charge of the actual building from the day the key was laid and who will see it through to the launching. Spends all his time on the boat. Never goes off even to sleep. But he's off now. Now, listen, Kent. Listen carefully. On Monday... Grayson called and said that Richards had been in the commander's quarters of the y boat. With him was the regular watchman, and Richards was chatting with him to pass the time. It's getting late. There goes six bells. Yes, sir. Uh, it is late. 
You spend the night on the boat? The same as always? Certainly. Can't afford to take chances now. Everybody on the boat? Yes, sir. Everybody except the man that I fished. And he's just now going up to the house. You made rounds? Yes, sir. Everything should What is the matter? Be quiet. Yes, sir. I said be quiet. You hear something? It couldn't be. There's no one now on the boat. You sure of that, Arthur? Yes, sir. You set the alarms? Yes, sir. Wait. Ah, look at the dials. That red light. Someone is in the whole back of Come on. Come on. What you do? I'm going to find out who that is, what he's doing, how he got on board, why he didn't get off the work and left. Let me go ahead, Come on. I have my gun. So about it. You say the master electrician is gone? Yes, I said I'm going up the ladder like this too. Here, this is the door. Quiet. You hear it? There's someone inside. Ready when I give the word. I'll open the door and brush it. Get your gun. Ready? All ready, Commander. I'm behind you. Now. Good evening, Commander. The shark is in waiting. Nobody has any idea. Some time later, the watchman came into the battery room alone and called the guard. Not a trace of Richards. Murdered? You tell me, Kent, and I hope you will. Take the first plane to Newport News. Get right on the job and don't tell anyone who you are. If they catch you, let me know. Otherwise, report as Grayson did every day at eight. Find Richards, Kent. Find Grayson and find the shark. Take a plane to Newport News? I don't think so. Not Superman. A plane takes three hours. It's ten o'clock when I left. Ten o'clock in the morning. I'll be there in five minutes more. There's Chesapeake Bay. There's Cape Henry. And there's the Navy on it. Going down now. Down into the sea like a fish. Down alongside the y boat To hear what's going on inside that shell of steel. Down. Down. And don't call me Kant. Someone might hear. Shall I say shark? I'm a fool. Call me nothing, whatever. You say they don't suspect you now, not they. They question you most closely. I explained what I know. I said I can follow the command of the bandit program. Excellent, Fritz. And then what else? I woke up from heaven to hit on the head. And I was. They believed you. Why not, Count? I mean, why shouldn't they believe me? That's true. So it was, my friends. And you see now how wise I was to tap you the box. Otherwise... Otherwise, I might have been fair to have it. Never mind. In a good cause, Fritz. What was that? What? That scraping noise outside the hole. Nothing. There's no one aboard but ourselves. The boat is descending. Except for us. He must have a kitchen and his help. Where is the commander? He is, uh, as well as he could be. Nearby? Indeed? Oh, no, no, not nearby. And not dead. Not yet. But soon, my friends. Quite soon. How so? He is in a little cave, my friend. Down the coast. In the only cliff of rock you can find for fifty miles. And the only cave. What happened to him? The tide fits twice a day, tide, and it fills the cave completely. And the commander is there in the cave? I trust so, if my orders have been carried out, and they usually are. Yes, he is there, Fritz. It is now close to 11. At 11.15, the tide is high. And at 12, at 12, my Fritz... <laughs> What is it, sir? Listen. That noise again. Outside the hall. Almost as if fingers of steel were scraping along the plates. Come on, no more talking. The wretches. The pilots. Very little time to wait. Now. Shark. But the other side, 
as Superman. Superman! <laughs> 